Elizabeth, go right and I'm going left. Can I ask a question, Macho Man? More questions. I'm so You lay there, hopefully as uncomfortable as you possibly can be. I want you to listen to me. I want you to digest this because before I leave in three weeks with your WWE Championship, I have a lot of things I want to get off my chest. Well, let me answer your question, Mr. Perfect. Comparing you to Narcissus would be like comparing ice cream to horse manure. Now, I know horse manure has its place in this world. Even perfect horse manure. But perfect, there is only room in this world for one human being that is truly anatomically perfect, that is physically and mentally superior Beyond imagination. Why, Ric Flair and I both agree that Michelangelo could not capture on canvas the stupendous qualities of Narcissus. He could not sculpt from marble the metamorphic qualities of Narcissus. Why, Narcissus is so beyond perfect, it's like he's from another galaxy. Sort of a Johnny come lately, if you'll pardon the expression. Hey, look, Hitman. Eight and a half years, Chico, you climb to the very, very top. You're the main man in the WWE. Now, say hello to Razor Ramon. Eight and a half months, and I caught you. I am numero uno. All right, the you're the number one. Contender. Yes, indeed, the number one contender. And if you're the number one contender and such a great competitor, why did you... Earlier, earlier tonight, we heard from Kurt Angle. Obvious resentment not only toward you, but toward everything that you stand for. Kurt Angle, the question of the night, you obviously don't get it, is why is The Rock the people's champion? Well, make no mistake about it, Kurt Angle. It wasn't The Rock who made himself the people's champion. It was the people who made The Rock the people's champion. Numbers for the WWF champion, Stone Cold. Kurt Stone Cold Steve Austin is going to make an example out of you. What? Stone Cold Steve Austin's out of control. That is a sick human being. No, my God, no, no. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Excuse me. Have you seen my stuff? What? What, you never seen a guy in his underwear? Probably not. <laughs> Don't laugh at my jokes. Hello there. Um, <clears throat> first of all, I'd like to thank all of my subscribers and um, just remind you um, in this video, or I want it to be interactive, so uh, please. First of all, um, let me know your view on the subject who you think are um, the, uh, well, the, the subject of the video, as you know, is the greatest talkers in WWE history. Um, that includes trash talkers, that includes people who um, quote unquote show us, which is <clears throat> uh, what, um, <clears throat> what you would say that heels do, um, like particularly amusing heels will um, put over the baby face by making a fool of themselves in, 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 in comic ways. Um, so it, this is really the best promo cutters, uh, best talkers, um, kind of mixed in with, you know, just generally speaking, who I, I think, um, uh, you know, uh, really built up a match well um, through, you know, entertainment, um, not necessarily wrestling. Okay, so I'd like you to mention who your favorite talkers are, and also if there's any subject that um, any of my subscribers want me to um, to, to talk about, uh, please do let me know in the comments, or um, you can obviously uh, email me. 
Um, I'd love to know and I will speak on it and do any kind of Q&A. Um, also, uh, yeah, um, okay, well I can get onto the list now. So this is my list of, um, okay, yes, I should say in the description box I'm going to put some examples of um, the greatest talkers and also just to let you know my next video is going to be on the internet darlings um, which is uh, at the moment in the WWE which is Daniel Bryan, um, Dolph Ziggler and CM Punk and just my views on them and how, how they can take their career to the next step. Um, I'm a massive fan uh, I, I'm sorry, I should say, I'm, I'm not a massive fan of theirs, but I see a lot of potential for them to be um, this generation's, you know, Mr. Perfect or, you know, I, I wouldn't say Stone Cold or The Rock, but like something along those lines. But, um, yeah, let's get straight onto it. I think this should be a fun list. Um, so I try to narrow it down to 10, um, but it was so, so difficult. Um, and I had to end up narrowing it down to 15 with some honourable mentions. Um, so, um, I'm going to just put the honourable mentions first. Um, I, by the way as well, you know, like people like Bobby the Brain Heenan are not going to be on this list. Um, you know, simply because they were manager talkers. So people who, this is really people who were wrestlers um, who could talk well. So that that's what this, this video is going to focus on. So honourable mentions I should mention. Razor Ramon, Cut and Awesome, Promo, um, Jerry the King, Law, oh, no, well, um, CM Punk is an honourable mention of mine. Um, Dolph Ziggler, I think, is actually a really really good promo cut I see a lot of um, uh, I see a lot of um, Kurt Angle stroke Mr. Perfect in him he's really really uh, good good promo cutter solid there's the franchise Shane Douglas now the franchise Shane, the franchise, um, Shane Douglas for any ECW fans out there um, isn't on uh, this list simply because I didn't follow his career enough. I have seen some great promos by him, but I've also seen some really, really awful promos. And I don't know what the balance is of how good he was. And I also think he was pretty sloppy in ring. Um, if anyone disagrees with that on Shane Douglas and is actually a Shane Douglas fan, um, please uh, show, uh, you know, put down in the comments any Shane Douglas matches or Shane Douglas promos um, that you think um, would change my mind because I actually really like him but I just didn't follow his career enough. Um, there's Hulk Hogan, another honourable mention. Chris Jericho, which a lot of people uh, may think, what, Chris Jericho is not on your list of um, greatest talkers of all time? I, I always thought his thing, um, his shtick um, as a babyface was pretty boring and pretty sucky suck up to the crowd and I hate people who kind of like suck up to the crowd I always saw him as a kind of poor man's rock he wanted to be the rock he wanted to have that kind of electricity and excitement and whatever but he just really couldn't generate that and I don't think he had like his feuds I don't know I don't think he always held up his end of a feud um, so much but I think when he turned to a bad guy his promo skills got better, but they still weren't as good as um, some of the people I've got on here. Uh, I've got Eddie Guerrero and Edge on here as well. Eddie Guerrero is one I love his promos. I think he had really good build up, build up to feuds, but I thought he was just more charismatic. If I was going to make a list of the most charismatic wrestlers, um, Eddie Guerrero would be right up there in the top uh, ten. Um, but for the content of what he actually said, I don't think he's up there personally. Um, that's personally. Um, this is a yeah, as I said, a personal list. Um, Edge is on there. I don't really want to go into it. I, I think he's highly overrated personally. Um, Million Dollar Man is there as well. I think he cut some great promos, but he didn't really add to his feuds. Um, so you know, I, I don't really put him up there. Dusty Rhodes is a brilliant promo cutter but he's a bit before my time so it would be kind of pretentious for me to put him up on my personal list. 
Um, Triple H, as anyone knows who's watched any of my channel, I'm not the biggest fan of Triple H. I think he's highly overrated. But I do think he's one of the great talkers in his own right. Um, he did some great intense promos, great psycho promos. Um, but a lot of the time he was so self-indulgent um, on, on the mic in terms of how long he'd spend on the mic and how much of the show he'd take up that it kind of took away from the good that he did um, which is unfortunate um, because he could be one of the greatest um, in terms of um, talkers ever um, he's way overrated by the WWE even if you take his greatest promos his, and, and you took out all the, the crap around them um, I still would have him just outside of um, the top 15 so yeah, let's go on to the top 15. I hope I've mentioned Hulk Hogan because I think Hulk Hogan was a really great in terms of the promo cutting and making, building up a feud, you know, getting you really pumped up for a match. Whatever you want to say about him, say your prayers, eat your vitamins, blah, blah, blah. He still was a great promo cutter. He got you really energized for a match. Um, that's my view. Oh, sh Okay, well... Uh, somehow I've put Hulk Hogan on my list anyway. Alright, so I'm going to start off. Um, yeah, 15 is uh, Jerry the King Lawler. Um, Jerry the King Lawler, um, as you know, went on to be a great color commentator. So obviously he was a good talker. And I think he's one of the greatest color commentators of all time. I think actually his color commentating um, kind of outshines his, his wrestling career, um, at least in the WWE. Um, but uh, nonetheless, Jerry the King Lawler, um, all you have to do is go back and look at his stuff on Bret the Hitman Hart and, um, and on uh, Jake the Snake Roberts to see just how funny and how uh, um, animated and how alive he was when it came to his promos. Brilliant at building a feud. His feud with, um, as I said, uh, Bret Hart and, um, and uh, Jake the Snake seems like an attitude era feud it was just so intense and like if you cut a promo of those, those, those feuds it really really was a great heel kind of you know he take it so far far beyond like you know um, calling uh, calling out um, uh, Bret Hart's dad calling him an old man saying you know just some of the things he said was outrageous but it was really really funny at the same time so Jerry the King Lawler is there for his wrestling promos and building up a feud. Um, he didn't do it all the time, um, which is why he's so low. But when he was on, he was really, really on. Um, so that's why Jerry the King Lawler is number 15. Um, 14, uh, as I said, I, I, put, I took Hulk Hogan out and I obviously put him back in again because I, I just... I just think he deserves to be in there because, as I said, no matter what you want to say about Hulk Hogan's promo or his wrestling skill, the guy really, really knew how to put on a show and how to get you involved. And if you were there at the time, you might watch it back and think, but even now I watch a Hulk Hogan you know, feud or, or, or promo and, uh, and it still... You know, brings back that memory of the Hulkamania. Maybe it's nostalgia or something. I was definitely a Hulkamaniac. Uh, definitely, definitely was. He was my favourite wrestler when I was younger. But as you've seen it, how, how, you know, he's come in later years and some of the matches he's put on with people like The Rock, you really see that uh, this guy does know how to build a few really, really well, actually. Um, he, he is one of the best of all time. Um, it was just really intense. It was really intense and iconic. And everyone, you know, especially when people imitate you. Imit imitation is the greatest form of flattery, as everyone knows. So I think Hulk Hogan is probably one of the most imitated wrestlers in terms of his promos of all time. Uh, number 13 is Ravishing Rick Rude. Ravishing Rick Rude, again, great heel, uh, amazing ability to build up a feud with his promos. Um, you know, you just have to look at his feud with Jake the Snake. Um, I think he had a really good feud with Ultimate Warrior as well. Um, just look at some of those to, to just see how great he was at just antagonizing a crowd, but 
in a really amusing way like he didn't want to take it off the channel and then when it came to his wrestling skills he was impeccable but what was good is he made um, the baby face looked like a million bucks even if you beat the baby face in the end by cheating or whatever he still made them look really really good and yeah he, he knew how to build up a feud with his words before they, they, he had some really great stuff um, as I said go, go back to Ultimate Warrior go back to Jake the Snake feud um, really fantastic um, 12 uh, Ric Flair I don't think you can uh, do a list without Ric Flair on it um, some may say this is a bit low one, I was too young to really follow his career, and when I was younger, I really hated Ric Flair because I, he was a bad guy, and he was facing off against Macho Man, one of my favorites, and um, so I, I didn't really appreciate it at the time, but yeah, he was intense, and he knew how to build up a great feud. His stuff with Matt, I mean, nearly every feud of Ric Flair's before, uh, you know, back in the day um, was absolutely epic and he would add to that with his promos look at his stuff against Dusty Rhodes um, just the way he, he was so animated and believed everything he said um, it made you believe um, even though you didn't like him at the time but you know as you grow older and as I started liking heels more when I was like <laughs> seven or something <laughs> no when I was about 10 12 maybe 11 I started liking the heels more um, than, than the good guys but um, yeah he, he, he was really fantastic um, number 11 is Paul Orndorff one of the most underrated wrestlers of all time um, really really funny great it's Mr. Wonderful Paul Orndorff really great at cutting promos really great at building up a feud like a slow like build up to the feud and then like the execution um, in the ring as well but like uh, uh, we're talking about you know uh, promos but um you know he just was so horrible a human being and just so nasty to the audience so nasty to people you know um he was calling people fat like women fat pigs before the rock was you know um telling them look at my body do you want to be like me if you want to be like me you've got to you know but you can never be like me anyway even if you tried the hardest you, you possibly could and it was just really really golden stuff by uh paul orndorff and um yeah it really built up a few great um number 10 uh mr perfect uh mr perfect was perfect for pretty much everything including his promos and just the way he, he could get a crowd to love him or get a crowd to hate him but like in the end we all agreed that he was exactly what he said and that was absolutely perfect um his promo style um i think is just uh it was slick it was funny there was like some coy humor in there and it just had that thing of like you know i believe in myself like I'm a god, you know, the incredible narcissist ego that he had, um, and yeah, I, I think, um, pretty much Mr. Perfect was perfect in every aspect of, um, wrestling, I, I think he's one of the most complete packages of any wrestler ever, um, and one of my personal favourites. Um, number nine is Ultimate Warrior. Now, whatever you want to say about the garbled nonsense that, um, Ultimate Warrior used to spew, <laughs> there was no way that did not get you pumped up for a match I didn't like Ultimate Warrior as I said I was a Hulkamaniac back in the day but there was you know you remembered when the Ultimate Warrior spoke and you were like yeah that's kind of cool <laughs> you know like, that's kind of cool um, and you can call it garbled nonsense you know but in the end of the day it was effective um, and you believed it I, I really think it was money I really think what the Ultimate Warrior did terms of his promos and how it would build up a feud as well like this insane maniac calling on his warriors you know um to, to 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 if you were an adult you found it funny you know which is good because it's memorable it's funny if you were a kid you were like oh my god hulk is gonna have to face the warriors can can hulk actually can can he muster the strength to beat the Warriors? You know, the same as I felt with the Macho Man when it was like his end of career match. 
um, against the Ultimate Warrior because I like Macho Man more than Ultimate Warrior. Again, it was like, oh my God, the, the, he's got the Warriors on his side. So how can Macho Man overcome this? And it was real. I, I think it was a very, very cool gimmick. The Ultimate Warrior does not get his dues at all. Um, number eight, coming in at number eight is Kurt Angle. Um, pretty much one of my favourite um, of all time. Um, if not, uh, my uh, it goes back and forth between my four favourites, um, which I'll get to at the end. Uh, five favourites, actually. I've got five, five favourites altogether. But Kurt Angle made the the whole aspect of the heel showing us which means making a fool of himself by speaking but doing it in a really funny way but a way that also made you kind of hate him and you notice you go back and you look at um Kurt Angle's promos and uh, the star. He's so underrated on the mic. It's unbelievable. I can't, and I, I don't know what that's about. I really don't know what what the point is of underrating him on the mic. It's almost like his skill in the ring has just outshined so so much. He's so good in the ring that people have to think that somehow he's not good at um you know cutting promos. And I think also there's the aspect of he wasn't a trash talker. He wasn't someone who's going to come in and say, you know, well, you're, uh, you know, a jabroni or you're, uh, you know, that wasn't his style. It was all about showing us. It was all about making fun of himself, being the clown. And there was no one better at being a clown or, you know, sometimes a psychopath, you know, like a sexual pervert sometimes he played. Whatever it was, there was just that aspect of him, um, you know, making it just really funny. And then when you saw the promo leading up to his match, it was just epic because, you know, I, I mean, I, I'd like to refer you to his um, his feud against Shawn Michaels, um, you know, where he, he got... Um, um, the sensational Sherry in and was singing, I'm just a sexy cut, sexy cut, I'll make your ankle hurt, um, you know, uh, that just built, uh, and then he, then he was, you know, did that thing with Marty Janetti the week before, just all the styles, and it was so layered as well, there were so many aspects to how Kurt Angle could draw you in, it could be intense, could be just funny, and as I said, in the description box, for each of my 15 picks, I'm going to pick my favorite promo of theirs so that you can have a look if there's any um, promos uh, of people that you want to see um, from my list. But yeah, um, absolutely um, magnificent, uh, you know, in terms of just making a fool of himself, um, being hilarious. And as much as the crowd would um, boo him as a heel, always after you'd hear laughter. There'd be like, you suck, you suck, but there'd always be laughter afterwards, you know. Uh, and and he worked the crowd, um, egg them on to kind of, you know, um, and I think he was one of the most over heels um, pro of the Attitude Era, possibly more over than Triple H, um, or, or, yeah, uh, one of the most over heels of the Attitude Era. Definitely not one of the most over baby faces, but definitely one of the best over the most over heels um, number seven is a uh, rowdy rowdy piper rowdy rowdy piper was amazing um, so much energy uh, could build up a feud with his words could be a baby face could be loved could be hated um, just a great great uh, mic worker um, you know anything from piper's pit um, his uh, his promo um, before he fought Bret Hart for the Intercontinental Championship. Uh, absolutely fantastic. He just had a style of his own. It's hard to really explain. It was really, really funny, really gold stuff, like going back to um, Rowdy Rowdy Piper. I, I would say like m probably one of my favorite is, um, promos of his was um, uh, WrestleMania 8, um, and it was against Bret Hart. Um, and they were just talking and you know he was trying to make light of the situation how he'd known Bret Hart since he was a kid and um, just making fun of that situation and uh, it, it, it's really brilliant um, I'll put that in as a link um, the Rowdy Papa 
Piper, uh, Bret Hart uh, promo, fantastic stuff. Um, number six, uh, Jake the Snake Roberts. Um, man, I, I mean, this guy was the personification of a snake. Now, it wasn't humorous. I don't even know how to put it. He, he was just a great mic worker. Um, just in terms of pumping you up for a match and believing, like, some, something's going to go down that's going to be horrible, that's going to end someone's career, that's going to, you know, like... And just some of the lines, the little one-liners in between, um, you know... Um, uh, <laughs> what was it, uh, short distance hard landing when he was talking about his DDP. So some of his, some of his little one-liners that he just used to throw in there um, were just brilliant. Uh, so witty, so dark, so intense, and yet not shouty. He didn't need to shout to, to, to make his point, and yet he still believed him. Jake the Snake is one of the greats of all time. I'd put him in the top 15 of, of any list of the greats of all time, to be honest. Um, in terms of ring psychology and just being able to work the crowd as a baby face or as a heel um, fantastic worker um, number five is Mick Foley Mick Foley is fantastic his mic skills are so excellent um, my favourite period of Mick Foley on the mic um, was because I didn't like Mick Foley when I was watching the Attitude Era I didn't appreciate him yet and it's only after time I appreciated just how brilliant and funny he was. And I would say, you know, in these top five, they they could all be interchanged. I could put Mick Foley as number one in, if I were looking at it from a different aspect. Um, because the way he would build up a feud, I mean, nobody built up a feud like between him and The Undertaker, between him and anyone, between him and Triple H, between, you know any one of his promos during that period or the the collected promo that built you up for the match was instant classic um, and uh, yeah no my favorite period of um, Mick Foley was when it was the, the rock and sock connection and that's when I got into him actually um, because at first I was like oh I was on the rock side I was like it's this annoying dude just hanging out with him like messing up his lines, you know, this is the rock, the great one, you know, oh, well, who's this clown, you know, and it took me a long time to realise just how much he, he made the, he, he made the rock better, but also how integral he was to that partnership, and just the little lines that he put in, in between some of the rock, who was pretty much saying a lot of similar things a lot of the time, um, you know, in terms of the punchline, but, you know, I'm not taking anything away from The Rock. He's not like someone who just says the same thing to, to similar effect. But um, definitely the way they played off each other was just uh, some of the most magic, hilarious points in WWE history. And it, it took me time, as I said, to realise how integral mankind was to that relationship. I personally, I really will say this, I will go on the record as saying this, I don't think The Rock would be in Hollywood right now if it wasn't for his stuff with um, with, uh, with with Mick Foley. Mick Foley and his segments are probably what made people see the potential for this guy to have range and do a lot of different things apart from just be this one um, character. I really, really believe that. And that's why the segment between him and Mick Foley is the highest rated segment in Raw history. Um, number four, Classy Freddy um, Blassie. I always talk about this guy, uh, love him to bits. Classy Freddy is um, one of, um, he is the original uh, Rock, he is the original Ric Flair, he's the original, you know, any of these guys who um, were known for being great talkers on the mic and being able to insult crowds and just being a great um you know um what you call it you know looking down his nose at everyone um heel um class that the genesis of that is classy freddie blassie and i will put um uh, uh, an interview he did with um muhammad ali in the description box to show you how good this guy was in the mic. Um, he was around, I think, in the 50s and stuff like that, but I've gone back 
to watch his tapes. And yeah, the way this guy could build up a feud or a match was... It wasn't really feuds, but the way he could build up a match was brilliant. And the way he could piss off a crowd, no one does it better. And anyone who has been a great heel like him, and a funny heel and, and a quick talker, um, they I'm telling you, they watch tapes of Freddie Blassie. I remember specifically hearing moments where The Rock would use something that Freddie Bla uh, Blassie said back in the day or use that kind of setup um, that Freddie Blassie would use back in the day. Uh, fantastic. Possibly the best talker in WWE history. Only reason he isn't the top on my list is because I didn't see enough of his career to really legitimise that statement, but one of my favourites of all time. Uh, number two um, is a tie. I've gone back and forth with these two guys um, in terms of who I think was better on the mic. And the two guys are Stone Cold, Steve Austin, and The Rock. And the way I've got to put it, I just think they were equal. I think they were, had very, very different styles, styles that really complemented each other. Um, I think, um, let me start off with Stone Cold Steve Austin. Stone Cold Steve Austin is the wittiest guy, not the funniest, but the wittiest guy of the Attitude Era. Off the cuff, spontaneous, um, able to just... I mean, his heel run is some of the best mic work I have ever seen um, outside of The Rock's heel work um, in 98 and 99. His heel work in 2001, which is so lamented by the WWE, I have no idea what that's about, why they feel that, because his heel work was magnificent. Um, he was such a good heel, um, and uh, as I said, like in terms of wit and being able to pull off a quick one-liner out of his head, um, I don't think there's anyone who does it like him. Uh, there are people who can perform and be funnier. I think maybe Mankind compares, or, or Mick Foley compares in this way, but not with the intensity and, 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 and sense of danger that Stone Cold Steve Austin brought to the table. So Stone Cold Steve Austin is definitely, um, you know, uh, off the cuff, can be intense, can make you think he's going to kick your ass, can be funny, um, can do it all on the mic. Um, the spectrum goes on, can even come up with great catchphrases, great you know, slogans, I mean, Austin 316, what, you know, all of those um, slogans are just, you know, some of the mo best, you know, uh, most iconic in the industry. I hate the fact that he m made crowds go, what, 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 because that really annoyed the fuck out of me. Um, but nonetheless, um, you can't help but say that uh, Stone Cold was a great innovator on the mic. I'm then going to go on to The Rock. Um, the Rock is, you know, The Rock. I mean, the funniest guy on the mic of all time, as far as I'm concerned. As I said, there's a difference between witty, quick, off the cuff, but in terms of performing and coming up with a great promo that is funny or that brings you in or that, um, you know, gets you intense and pumped for a match, The Rock, bar none. And um, his stuff especially when he was a heel, oh my god, whether it be 2003 Hollywood, Rock, um, 99, oh, 98, um, 99 um, Corporate Rock, or The Rock from The Nation, my god, this man was just absolutely on fire, everything he said was cool, or funny, um, or just, you know, would make you hate him, but there'll be laughter after. He, 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 he's just um, an impeccable, impeccable mic worker. I don't even know which promo to choose of The Rocks to show how great he was um, at uh, number um, two. But, like, uh, you know, what a great talker. Absolutely great talker. And as I said, look in the description box. I'm going to put examples of these promos um, to show you. You can even, if you want, put them in between um, so that you can look at the promo and then 
um, you know, go to the next number to see who, who's next on the list. That might be a fun way to do it. But um, yeah, The Rock and his way of building up in intense feuds was brilliant. Whether as a baby face or as a as a heel, um, simply uh, once in a lifetime find much like Stone Cold Steve Austin, both the greatest mic workers of the Attitude Era, without. Um, doubt, I I would say I might put Mick Foley up there with them, kind of. As I said, the, the top five are kind of interchangeable. And my number one mic worker of all time um, is the Macho Man Randy Savage. Woo, yeah, it. Um, I don't know, the guy was the most iconic, memorable talker of all time. If you heard a uh, uh, Macho Man Randy Savage promo, you'd know who it was, you'd know what time it was, you'd be like, yeah, I'm going to watch the TV now because this guy's got something crazy to say. Um, just cocaine fuel madness. Um, I don't know if he was taking cocaine, but like, just seemed like that, like... This guy was on some trip, um, and but you wanted to go on that trip with him, that journey through that promo. It was like co a little bit more coherent than the Ultimate Warrior. Um, intense anger, pain, and that was the good thing about it. It didn't have to just be humorous and funny. Um, it, it, it was intense, uh, and there was anger there. And I loved, loved, loved. The fact that he had a plan in his head. Like the promos were all part of a plan of the match. And of his whole career. He'd plan a whole year um, of a storyline. Um, in which his promos would fit in. So you think they're all random and crazy. But there was real, real method to Macho Man's madness. Um, and so, you know, that whole thing with Elizabeth. That whole journey he took with Elizabeth till where he would say, get, you know, I'm here, I'm the champ, I'm the best, why, why are you talking to Elizabeth, who cares how she leave, or, or just, the only reason he'd get Elizabeth to come in is to say how great he was, and then he'd tell her to, you know, get out of here, um, that whole method was all leading to that moment at Wrestlemania, where they got back together, you know, um, that was all leading to that, and he planned that. It wasn't Vince McMahon, it wasn't anyone like that. He planned that, and that's why I say he's the greatest of all time, because his promos and his craziness all fit in to a master plan he always had. Um, you know, he, he even, towards the end of a, his career, worked out a year-long feud with Shawn Michaels, which that fucking idiot Vince McMahon didn't um, end up using a year long feud with Shawn Michaels where Shawn Michaels would win at Wrestlemania whatever um, finally um, to take I don't know if it was the Intercontinental or the World Championship but like a year long feud to get Shawn Michaels over and he planned it and told him all the matches and how the promo with himself would go brilliant brilliant mic worker, um, can't say enough about him, transcendent star, um, best of all time, RIP Macho Man, um, and um, thank you guys for staying with me um, through my greatest talkers of all time, um, please look in the description box, as I said, I'm going to have examples of all their best promos, and please like and subscribe if you enjoyed uh, the video, and let me know who your, some of your favourite talkers are. And if you disagree with my list, um, thank you. We take what we want, and after we take Lex Luger in the time, we want the gold, sucker. Hulk Hogan, we coming for you, nigga. I should point out for the record, Stevie Ray, look at this. Take a look.